Welcome back guys, Tactical AV here, and today I'm going to talk to you about Dolby Atmos versus DTSX. So, for a long time, object-based surround sound has been out now. We all know about it, and I think every one of my viewers is very well aware of what Dolby Atmos is. Now, I'm sure for the rest of us, we also are well aware of what DTSX is. Axes, but exactly what the difference is between the two, I don't think everyone is well aware of. And I think a few of us, like myself, well, I'd like to see some illustrations on what exactly the difference very well might be between the two. So, we love home theater, guys. We love sound. We love surround sound, digital theater audio, so on and so forth. What about the difference between Atmos versus DTSX? What is it? So, first off, just a little bit of education for the both of them. Dolby Atmos and DTSX are both forms of object-based surround sound. So I think, what, we're going on about two and a half to three years now. You know, I don't think any which one of them was out first or one before the other. Uh, DTSX was well in advertisements and illustrations, um, articles, so on and so forth, like Sound and Vision, uh, the Internet, other sound, and home theater magazines, and so on and so forth. Dolby wasn't the one necessarily to advertise as much as DTS. However, as with the main platform, Forms of physical media, uh, Dolby takes the cake in a sense of they've got the main bulk, so to speak, of the content out there in the licensing. So the main majority of physical content is going to be in Dolby uh, Atmos and True HD and Dolby Digital. I mean, any DVD from back in 1999 and 2005, they're almost all going to have Dolby Digital. Anything from 2005 on up that's Blu ray. What was the most common form of audio? Well, for a while it was Dolby Digital, um, and then it came Dolby True HD. Uh, every once in a while you had a Dolby Digital Plus on a digital source. However, then we moved into the realm of DTS HD Master Audio, the lossless format. So I think once each one of them had done their part in a sense of advertising and gotten the world to know, okay, we're coming out with these new sound technologies and home theater in a sense. We've tried it in the theaters. We're going to move it on to the home now. How is it going to work? It exploded. It went perfectly. It went great. First, it showed up in very high-end expensive surround sound receivers until eventually now you walk into a Best Buy, you can pick up a surround sound receiver with Dolby Atmos and DTSX for, heck, under 200 150 bucks. So it's widely available and very popular. Now, as far as Dolby Atmos versus DTSX, which is more common, well, we're going to definitely say Atmos. That doesn't mean, however, that DTSX isn't trailing far behind. DTSX has added actually more than 55 titles in the last five months alone. So a year ago, there weren't too many DTSX titles as opposed to Atmos titles. Now, they're pretty much head-to-head. -head. There's just about the same amount of X titles as there are for Atmos. However, what's the difference, and do some people prefer one over the other? So guys, instead of each audio track being encoded to a specific or certain speaker, as with 5.1 and generic surround sound, we're now moving mapping objects in, well, a 3D space. So it's a lot different than 5.1. However, how do they both compare, too? So I will throw out there, guys, that both of them work exactly the same way. However, DTSX is supposed to be a little bit more uh, generic in a sense of its layout with the speakers. So you're supposed to be able to just throw some speakers anywhere in the room and have a enveloping and intrinsic, or at least interesting, enveloping, engaging surround sound experience. As with Dolby Atmos, they expect a little bit more strict adherence to the guidelines of kind of where the speakers should be placed in a sense of directly overhead of you as a front left and right channel, then moving to a left and right rear height speaker or a middle top height, so on and so forth. So each of them pretty much work exactly the same way. Now, does Atmos have more height content in it than DTSX, or does DTSX have more height content in it than Atmos? That's not necessarily the case. It's more the quality of each one that does come into play overall. So let's say you're watching a scene where a plane is flying overhead toward you. 
instead of, for example, the tracks max to the front speakers getting quieter and the tracks for the back speakers getting louder as the plane passes by, the plane's edges will instead be encoded as a spot in space above you that moves around in real time. Now, this may not sound like too much of a difference, but the idea here is that Atmos and DTSX scale very well. Traditional surround setups had no way of knowing much more than distance from your couch about the physical placement of the speakers in your room, so results can be very inconsistent from setup to setup. Above the listener, halfway between the screen and the chair, and against the right-hand wall, rather than just right front speaker to produce sound that's more accurately reflective of where it's supposed to be. So really guys, when you get down to the specifications of both of the surround sounding uh, codecs and formats, actually Dolby Atmos is said to be able to support up to 128 different objects. That is said to be able to include 10 traditional channels and 118 of the new audio objects. DTSX, on the other hand, is said to be able to support an unlimited number of objects. So we're not looking at necessarily a constraint or any sort of limitation with where DTSX is technically able to take this, whereas Dolby is in a sense constricted, unfortunately, and they're limited. Their technology is not exactly, um, you know, leave it up to the mind and thinker to make this an endless opportunity of surround sound to grow and expand. However, DTS X has. So I think that says a little bit about the technology itself and who is a little slightly more advanced or ahead of one or the other in a sense of their technology as a whole or as a service being sold to the general public. Now, when it comes to each of them being compared, as I've said before, guys, I don't think a lot of people blindfolded would be able to point out the difference and say, hey, I just listened to that movie in Dolby Atmos and that one was in DTSX and vice versa. I think they're very, very similar. However, I myself do personally prefer DTSX. Now, obviously, both Dolby Atmos and DTSX are both compatible and set up to work with a native 5.1 and 7.1 or 2 surround sound system. The Dolby Atmos is actually set up to be able to give you up to 34 different surround sound channels in a home theater setup or configuration. So that might really seem excessive to some people. To be honest with you, it does actually make a difference in the quality of the sound format itself. But for either one of them, guys, it really doesn't make a difference if you have bouncy house speakers and you're trying to point the sound on your front left and right speakers up at the ceiling, or you've got a true height speaker setup configuration. So, but here's where I actually want to take the time to talk to you guys about what one of the main differences with DTSX over Dolby Atmos that actually truly does exist. Now, there's one big main advantage that I'll just quickly clarify in a sense of Definitely Atmos is more common and more popular than DTSX. Okay, we understand that. We agree that, hands down, Atmos shows up on more, you know, things than Dolby, I'm sorry, than DTSX. However, when it comes to streaming, you're 99.9 .9 times going to run into Dolby, whether it's Dolby um, Digital Plus, Dolby Digital I don't care if it's Dolby Pro Logic, you're nine times out of ten going to be streaming something in some form of Dolby. I have never to this day seen anything stream on any service, be it Hulu, Vudu, Netflix, Amazon, any of them, seen any service stream in DTS, any form of DTS that is too. And if you have, well, please let me in the comment section know exactly what streaming service that was and what title you were capable of watching in DTS. But so now that we've got that out of the way, what is the main difference between Dolby and DTS at this point? Well, and this isn't to say that this might happen to both of them at some point. Uh, so, okay, be it 9 times out of 10, Dolby's more common. But what is this big advantage? Is that, is that necessarily an advantage in one service over the other? Wait, not so fast. Not necessarily in the service. Let's talk about that big advantage really quickly. All right, so as things stand right now, anyone is capable of going to any one of these services and clicking on any piece of content, whether it be a movie or a show, and I can guarantee you 
100% of the time it's going to be encoded in Dolby, whether it be Dolby Pro Logic, Dolby Digital, or Dolby Digital Plus. I can almost guarantee you it's going to be encoded in some way or another by Dolby. Unfortunately, not DTS. However, what is the main advantage here that one has over the other? Okay, so if we're streaming something in Dolby, or let's say we're watching a DVD in Dolby, say they're an old form of Dolby, like Dolby Digital, right? Well, currently, and for a while, we have been able to take that source and up mix it into what? Aha, uh -huh, Dolby Atmos. Now, and of course, I'll talk further about that later, but if I select something from my Amazon Prime right here, say we just watch a random show, when I start this up, I can guarantee you that it is going to be streaming in Dolby Digital Plus. That gives me the capability of taking the signal and turning it from Dolby Digital Plus into a Dolby Atmos. Now, it does that because it can up-mix Dolby Contents sources. What about DTS, you ask? Well, unfortunately, with DTS-X, it's just not possible. We just can't do that. We can't take a source from streaming, or say, a Dolby Digital or Dolby True HD source, and turn that into DTS-X. It just won't work. Yes, we can take just about any source, be it even an analog source, run it through through a digital surround sound processor, or any basic surround sound receiver, and we can see that we're gonna get height information to be able to play out of it if we put it into an up mixing sound mode that is. But does that mean you're actually getting DTSX versus when you take a Dolby signal and up mix it into Atmos? No. Neither one. In fact, when you upmix Atmos, that's not native Atmos, as with, say, watching a DTS HD Master Audio lossless Kodak, say on a 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray, which they still obviously make. That is the default form of surround sound on 4K Ultra HDs. But even if you're watching a lossless Kodak in DTS HD Master Audio, you're still not, unfortunately, able to upmix it into DTSX. Yes, you can get height information, but it still will never be a native form. DTSX, and it never will be until you have that actual native form of DTSX with you. All right, so there's got to be more to the story than that. What else is it between DTSX and Dolby Atmos that really separates the two of them apart? Well, listen to this, guys. Unfortunately, Dolby has said that they're going to be restricting non-native upmixing on Atmos products. What does that mean? Now, just briefly, all that means is you won't simply be able to take a DTS HD Master Audio or a DTS signal and turn it into Atmos. Even if it is DTS-X, you're going to have to listen to it in DTS-X. Now, if you're watching a Dolby source, which, as I pointed out, almost everything streaming and at least 50% of our physical form of contents are in some form of Dolby, well, you'll be in good hands and it won't be a problem. But what Dolby is planning on doing is actually, yes, restricting the non-native Dolby you know, sources and being able to upmix that to Atmos. Now, currently, we can do that with just about anything. Heck, I can take a form of Dolby Pro Logic and put it into my receiver, just as anybody else can, as long as they have a Dolby Atmos capable receiver and upmix that using height speakers. Now, of course, it's not native Atmos, but it is upmixing. That is unfortunately what Dolby's talking about. They are talking about restricting the capability of you, say, having a DTS sound mode on with a Dolby encoded source. So let's talk about what a Dolby encoded source could be. Anything. I've got a video game, uh, Call of Duty World War II on PlayStation 4, right? That's encoded in Dolby Digital. Well, apparently if I were to take this video game and try and put it into some form of Dolby Atmos sound mode, it would work. But if I was to use a DTS sound mode, it would just work the same, wouldn't it? Wrong. You put in Dolby, any form of Dolby, you're going to get Dolby Atmos out. You put in DTS, any form of DTS, and you don't 
get DTSX out. Why is that? Well, because DTSX and Dolby Atmos are both backwards compatible, obviously, but you can't upmix into DTSX technically. At least any of the processors nowadays aren't capable of showing you the actual DTSX sign on the receiver and be in DTSX sound modes currently with any DTS. Now, yes, you can upmix using a form of DTS, but that's not DTSX, of course. In fact, most likely that is going to be some form of DTS Neural X. Okay, so, so far, guys, we've figured out or realized at least that DTS-X can't be upmixed just as easily as Dolby Atmos can be. There's a little bit of a difference in a sense of how each format is capable of being upmixed. So Dolby, in a sense, is a little bit more common and a little bit more functional in a sense of we're able to use any streaming source and upmix it into Atmos, getting a pretty close to a native form of Atmos. But DTS, well, that's another story you're going to have to unfortunately to get the, the Blu-ray or the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray version to get DTS X, guys. So, but that's all said and great. That's all wonderful. But I think some of the people actually wanted to hear the difference between Dolby Atmos and DTS X. And while both of them, guys, are great, 100% wonderful, superb form of surround sound formats, each of them are different in their own characteristics. Some of them sound differently as movie sounds different guys each and every sound so ultimately in the end yes i will put a video up next of a complete comparison of some dolby atmos source content and some dts x source content and we'll actually see if we can truly notice any bit of a difference once recorded and played back through a digital compressed source like youtube so that's going to wrap today's video up, guys. I hope you really enjoyed it, and once again, I'll be putting out a video next of a difference between Atmos and DTSX. See if some people can really tell the difference. Next coming, guys, I got a lot of different things. I can't wait to share with you guys some of the new equipment I got. In fact, I've been doing a lot of work and a lot of thinking on the Ultimate Home Theater build. I've been using the Epson 5040 UB with the female almost on a monthly basis. Since we don't have a screen set up, I haven't been fortunate enough to be able to do that since any of the dedicated home theater build is even halfway near done. In fact, I've almost determined that buying a new property altogether and starting from scratch is really ultimately in my best interest. So I've got some new equipment. I've got some new furniture. I've got a lot to stuff to share with you guys, and I can't wait. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, guys. Most of all, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you, and take care. Also, guys, don't forget to check out things like my list of suggested products for Atmos and DTSX, including everything from source material to screens, projectors, Blu-ray players, speakers, receivers, processors, power amps, and processors. I'll have videos on subwoofer and speaker placement. I'll also be doing a comparison video of the SVS Prime, not only bookshelf series speakers, but also the Prime Towers versus the Ultra Towers and the Ultra bookshelf series speakers. In fact, I've even got speaker cable, brand new speaker cable, ready 